Hi. Hello. Welcome again to the Triumph of Marriage e-learning course. We're on to week 12 and this week we're going to be talking about the issue of re resolving conflict. Now we've been talking about love in the marriage and of course that should be there but inevitably there, there is going to be conflict from time to time in your marriage. Yes, because um, let's face it, men and women are made differently, mm. which is a good thing. Yes, it is. Yeah. And um, there are going to be times where, you know, I think I am very emotional and will go into something completely differently to Gerard. Yes, yes. So ev every marriage has conflict from time to time. Uh, the important thing is that you know how to get yourself out of the conflict. And we're not just talking about minor things through the day, difference of opinion. We're talking about where, yeah, where there's been a breakdown in communication. Maybe you're not, you're not talking to each other. You both feel very hurt. Uh, you're both suffering. Mm. Um, those things will happen from time to time. But mm. God hates conflict. God hates that sort of breakup in relationship. And so he wants us to resolve those conflicts as soon as we can. Mm. Before we get into the five issues we're going to talk about how to do that, it's good to understand the areas of sensitivity in your relationship because conflict generally comes out uh, in a time of stress where for whatever reason in the marriage there's things that have, have happened that are causing stress between you and you, that, that escalates and then before, before you know what you're doing you're arguing and now you've got a major conflict at hand. Mm -hmm. So being aware of it, money is a, a reason for stress. Um, sexual intimacy is not working as it should do. Uh, maybe it's grief, maybe you've had a loss in the family. That causes a, an extra level of stress and pain. Maybe children, that can, they can be stressful from time to time. Maybe it's the in-laws. Lots of different reasons. Work, lots of different reasons that can cause stress. Good to be aware when one or both of you are going through additional stress in your marriage that you're extra sensitive, that you don't fall into conflict in the, in the first place. So you're actually uh, avoiding, it's preventative if you like, uh, wisdom to avoid that conflict. So what happens though when you, notwithstanding all of that, you, you find yourself in a conflict situation and you're not speaking to each other, you're feeling greatly hurt. The sad thing is that when you really love somebody, often it's the people you love the most that we can hurt the most. That's, that's just how it is. You don't want to, it's a horrible feeling and you want to get out of it straight away. What do you do? Well, we're going to go through five important steps to do. And hopefully you'll both be doing this, but, but if, the, if your spouse is not doing it, at least you can do it. You can be responsible for your own walk before the Lord. Yeah. And the first thing you should do is pray. And you want to ask the Lord, Lord, we've got into this horrible situation. You see it, Lord. It's, it's grieving you more than it's grieving me, and it's more than it's grieving my spouse. Please, would you come and help? Help me mm -hmm. for this to, to do what I need to do to bring resolution as quickly as I can. Mm -hmm. Search me, Lord. Show me where I, what I've, I've done wrong. Be humble, be willing to be shown. Maybe you've said some unkind things or you've done some unkind things. Things that you've caused, that you, things you shouldn't have done. Ask the Lord to come and help you. Jesus said of the Holy Spirit, he's a helper. And it's so lovely to ask the Holy Spirit to come and help us in those situations. Remembering that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Your spouse is not your enemy, <laughs> although it may feel like it at the time. No. He or she is not your enemy. Our enemy is the spiritual forces of wickedness that are in the unseen realm. And you can, you can be sure that Satan has had a big play in this conflict that's happened. Mm -hmm. Especially if you've got something big coming up. Be, be aware of that. Satan doesn't want it to happen. And he's trying to get in there to spoil things. Right. And so uh, remember that's where your enemy is and that's what you want to deal with. So pray. That's the first thing you need to do. Ask for God's grace yeah. to help you to bring resolution. Step number two is containment. What do we mean by that? Well, we, we live at the moment in Southern California and there's times where there's terrible fires that go on that ravage the mountains and the trees. It's awful. It spreads like anything, especially if there's a wind there. And they have the fire fighting units out to put it out as soon as they can. So when we say containment, we're saying don't let it get any worse. Because <laughs> what can often happen in, in a conflict situation is that you've broken communication, you're both very, very sore, and it's so easy for you to go at each other again. <laughs> and you just keep it going. In fact, you can make it worse. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do then is to put a zip on your mouth and to not retaliate. We've talked about this before. 
even though you're hurting, even though these words are coming at you which are really painful, don't say anything. Remember that verse we looked at last week was a gentle answer turns away wrath. Contain it. Don't let it go any further by you adding to it with unkind words. Make sure you, you, you don't say that. Don't let any unwholesome words. We said that last week, didn't we? Yeah. So that's number two. Number three uh, is that we now looking for reconciliation. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing to do is to come back to the, the biggest reconciliation that's ever happened on planet Earth when God himself came down in the person of Jesus Christ and he came to reconcile sinful man to himself. And he stepped out and put himself out. Jesus always blows my mind. Jesus came, comes from the glory of heaven, mm. comes to this broken earth where he's spat upon, he's hated, he's tortured, and eventually he dies for us. What did he do it for? To bring reconciliation between a sinful man and a loving God. Mm. Uh, incredible uh, reconciliation there. And those are the steps, really, that you need in this situation. Yes, you're both hurting, but God wants you to be brought together. You really want to be brought together. So what are you going to do? Well, one of you has to make a step forward. One of you has to put yourself out and to step forward and even be willing to say, I'm sorry. Even when you're finding it hard to know what to say sorry for, you think it's all the other person's fault. Find a reason. Maybe your tone wasn't nice. Maybe, maybe your spouse was saying all the unkind words, but your, your tone wasn't very nice in what you were saying. Or your, your manner, something you can find, like, hey, I'm sorry, I, I should have been more careful, I should have listened to you more. Find something that you can say sorry for, step out. Is it easy? No, it's not. It's not easy. It, you're going to be embarrassed by it. You're going to have to put yourself out. You're going to have to humble yourself to do it. But that's the step that you took. That's what Jesus did in, in, in coming to bring reconciliation here on earth. I find that in our, in our marriage, generally, it's, it's I need to take the step. And I think that's right, because Jesus said, uh, husbands, love your wives, or it says in the Bible anyway, husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. Mm. So we're called as husbands to put ourselves out. And, and I think it's, it should be, it's very often it's the husband who has to st step out. And what I normally will come and say to Jeannie, I say, can, can we be friends again? <laughs> says that, I'm like, what is this about? He's my best friend. What's happening to my heart? You know, this stupid, it's stupid usually. Yes, it is. Not always, but, yeah. you know, my heart, it, it, it just softens my heart when he says that. Mm. I think it's such a lovely picture of how Christ is with, with the... Uh, with his body. Yes. You want to resolve yes. this before yes. God. Yes. Um, and, and the minute you say that, there's something, there's a shift. Yeah. So beautiful. Yes, there are. So beautiful. But having said that, can I just say, yeah. um, I'm sure sometimes I've said sorry. We the women have to say, we have to say sorry. Well, yes. It's not, but, you know. Yeah. And do it as quickly as you can. The quicker you can reconcile, the easier it is. The longer you leave it, the worse it is. Yeah. So do it as quickly as you yes. can. And I, I, one of the things before that... the sun goes down, doesn't it say? It does say that, yeah. Before the sun goes down, and if you can. I, I often think about how the Lord is hurting, you know, if we're not, if we've got a conflict. And we don't want to hurt the Lord anymore. So he wants us to be reconciled quickly. So we put ourselves out. Um, remember, it's more important to be reconciled than, than the issue itself. Often we think the issue is so huge. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's but not, no, not, not in the bigger heart. scheme of things. No, yeah. So yeah. Heart, yeah. Yeah. So be courageous. Go for it, and and um, and bring that reconciliation. So the next thing that's very important uh, is resolving the issue because you might okay you've said said sorry you've made up and you, uh, the love's flowing again but you've still got the issue there's still an issue that needs to be resolved. Um, maybe the issue will go away in the in the context of you loving each other but in some cases it doesn't. There still needs to be a decision. Now in that instance. The, I, the, the rule in the Bible is that the, the wives should take the lead of the husband. Let's go back to the dance again. Is that, that. Yeah, it is. The husband take a lead, even if the wife is still thinking, oh, I'm not sure if I really agree with that decision. What we often find in the Lord is that the Lord brings things round. When we, when we take his way of doing things, he turns it around to make it right, whatever the short-term decision is. So husbands, love your wives, lay your life down for your wives, and wives allow your husband to take a lead. Yes, that's going to take some humility on your side to do that. I was that. just going to say, that's, 
That's a huge leap of faith. That's the other side of it, isn't it? Singing and dancing as well. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. So, but that's that's how the Lord wants it to be, and that's a, that's a beautiful way. We Jesus takes the lead. We follow him. He's, he's at the head, isn't he? Mm. And we do what he wants us to do and, and guide with that mm. in, a, in a context of love, of course. Mm. And then the final step of, of, of conflict resolution is celebration. Because Satan thought he could, he could get one on us mm. and, and we've got the victory. Mm. It says in the Bible that he always leads us in triumph. So he thought he could spoil this wonderful relationship and we've kicked him in the teeth again and we said, no, you haven't. <laughs> because... We've applied the blood of Jesus Christ, the, the, the cross of, the, of Christ again, Amen. and he's led us in triumph, and we're celebrating in that. This is a celebration. Yes, this whole thing is a celebration. This whole thing is a celebration. Yeah. Of glory to Jesus. Yes. So hold no, hold no records of wrongs again. We're moving on. We've won a victory, and we move on to give God the glory in all that we do. Amen. So thanks for watching in again. Thanks. Take care, and God bless you. God bless. Bye-bye. Yeah.